Thanks again for joining me here at ButnowMinistry.org, and today we're going to talk about uh, part two on textual criticism. And today we're going to cover, we're going to look at the NASB and the NIV, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Your corrupt text, your Sinaiticus Vaticanus text, is where those translations come from, compared to the King James Authorized Version, the majority text, and. Clearly, you're going to see there's an agenda. You're going to see that there's two differences in the text, and you're going to clearly see why um, biblical Christianity is gone. Okay, we're going to start with Mark 10:24 in the King James Authorized Version, the KJV. Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? And again, is salvation by works or faith in Jesus Christ? Okay, so the King James Authorized Version, Mark 10, 24. Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Corrupt translations. Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? So in your corrupt translation, it's just hard. In your King James, it's for those that trust in their riches. Okay, there's a difference there. If you can't see this difference, then... You, you need to study more. You need to make sure you're saved. You need to understand Pauline truth. You need to understand Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Okay? We are not many who corrupt the word of God. Second Corinthians 2.17 says that in um, our King James Authorized Version. You're not going to find that in your new text. Okay? Second Corinthians 2.17 Sorry, 1 Corinthians. No, 2 Corinthians 2.17. I'm in 1 Corinthians. I'm not going to find it there. First, 2 Corinthians 2.17 says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Okay? We don't, we're not the many that corrupt the Word of God. They are, right? All these people that believe in the new text, the new translations, and all these scholars and pastors that are re rewriting and putting out better and easier to understand translations, those are the ones that are corrupting the Word of God. Okay? We are not as many on this station. Okay? Luke 21, 19. King James Authorized Version. In your patience. Corrupt text. By standing firm, you will save yourself. I like that one. That's Roman Catholic theology. How about John 3.36? Believeth, King James Authorized Version. Corrupt text, obey. Obey who? Those that are in charge with your soul? Hebrews 3.17? Or I'm sorry, Hebrews 13.17? Do you see the agenda or not? Galatians 5.22, King James Authorized Version, faith, corrupt text, faithfulness. Wow, now you got to do something. Faith is not doing anything. It's hoping in what you don't see. And they make it faithfulness. How about Romans 11.6? King James Authorized Version, but if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Your corrupt text you can't find it. It's not there. How about Romans 1.16? The gospel of Christ. In the KJV, in your corrupt text, the gospel. Which one? Gospel of the kingdom, gospel of the circumcision, gospel of the uncircumcision, gospel of the grace of God, gospel of Christ, gospel of God, the everlasting gospel. Just the gospel. Hey, it's the go Oh, it's all one. That's right. It's all the same. That's what they tell you. How about Acts 8.37? King James Authorized Version. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Your corrupt text? It's not there. How about Colossians 1.14? King James Authorized Version. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Corrupt text? In whom we have redemption. They remove the blood. And you know what? There are translations out there that are called the bloodless Bibles because they removed all the blood because it could be offensive to somebody. It's the blood that saves us. It's the blood of Christ that forgives us. And they remove it. 
Maybe John MacArthur was part of that project. How about Mark 942? King James Authorized Version? Believe in me. Corrupt text? Who believes? Who believes? Who believes what? How about John 647? King James Authorized Version? He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Corrupt text? He who believes has everlasting life. Believes what? I have to do more works, I have to drive the bus, I have to be on time at church, I have to serve in church, children's ministry, I have to be water baptized, I have to tithe? Believe in what? How about Acts 22.16, the King James Authorized Version? Calling on the name of the Lord. How about your corrupt text? Calling on his name. Whose name? I wouldn't know whose name that is. They took it out. How about 1 John 5.13, King James Authorized Version? And that he and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Corrupt text? It's not there. Can't find it. How about Second John 1 9? King James Authorized Version. The doctrine of Christ. Your corrupt text? Teaching. Teaching what? <laughs> Unbelievable, man. They remove the doctrine of Christ and they make it teaching. Wow. I mean seriously. Who put this translation together? How about 1 Timothy 2.7? King James Authorized Version. Truth in Christ. Corrupt text? Truth. It's the truth. How about Galatians 6.15? King James Authorized Version. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything. How about your corrupt text? Neither is circumcision anything. Wow, what happened to Jesus, Christ Jesus? God must have lost those words. How about Ephesians 3.14? King James Authorized Version. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. How about your corrupt text? I bow my knees before the Father. Before the Father. Whose Father? Oh, it doesn't say. I guess I have to guess. Oh, that's right. It's only 98% accurate. I forgot about that. How about Galatians 4, 7? King James Authorized Version. An heir of God through Christ. Corrupt text? An heir of God. Hey, but they have God capitalized, so that kind of helps. But I wouldn't know it's through Christ. They removed that. So I guess I have to guess about that. It's only 98% accurate. You know, your corrupt translations, your minority text, they only use 4% of all the copies that are out there. 4%. Is it not obvious? Half of this stuff is made up. How about Ephesians 3.9? King James Authorized Version. God who hath created all things by Jesus Christ. All things by Jesus Christ. Corrupt text. God who created all things. Hmm. What God might that be? doesn't say. Colossians 1-2, King James Authorized Version, Our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Corrupt text? The Father. The Father. How about 1 John 4-3? And every spirit that confess, confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. King James Authorized Version. Your corrupt text. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. So Christ is come in the flesh. We are to everybody that doesn't confess that Christ came in the flesh is not of God. Okay? They remove that. So I guess everyone is not of God. Period. There's clearly an agenda here. Don't you think? that manipulation agenda that, hey, you have to get water baptized for church membership. And if you're not, you can't partake of the Lord's Supper. And by the way, you better be here on time and you have to get involved, okay, because we're about community and small groups and make sure that you sign up for one of our programs. You know, that's a clear faith issue right there. They're not letting God do the work through his word like he says he will. They have to have all these programs to do the work. 
when God's done it all for you, okay? And when you're using these corrupt texts, God's not going to do any work through you, like he says in the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says that God is going to work effectually in you that believe. And in 2 Timothy 2 15, we are to study to show ourselves approved so God can do the work through us. But if you have a corrupt text, the minority text, the Sinaiticus Vaticanus text, doesn't even say to study in that. It doesn't tell you how to study. It doesn't tell you how to rightly divide. It doesn't tell you that so you will not be able to show yourself approved if you're using the corrupt text. That's dangerous. Don't you think? And by the way, all editions of the NIV and the NASB are not the same. So you may look up some of these verse references and say, hey, you know, what is he talking about? Well, the NASB is updated like every five years. Your NIV is updated every year. And let's just take a look at the preface in your NIV and see what it says, okay? So when you open to the first page of your NIV, okay, and it says, let me see if I can find it, and it says in your NIV, in the beginning, you know, on the preface, it'll usually tell you um, how often they update it, okay? And in the preface, it says, let's see, let's see here. From the beginning of the project, the Committee on the Bible Translation held to certain goals for the New International Version, that it would be an accurate translation and one that would have clarity and literally quality and so prove suitable for public and private reading, teaching, preaching, memorizing, and liturgical, liturgical use. The Committee also sought to preserve some measure of continuity continuity with the long tradition of translating the scriptures into English. In working toward these goals, the translators were united in their commitment to the authority and infallibility of the Bible as God's word in written form. They believe that it contains the divine answer to the deepest needs of humanity, that it sheds unique light on our path in a dark world, and that it sets forth the way to our eternal well-being. The first concern of the translators has been the accuracy of the translation and its fidelity to the thought of the biblical writers. They have weighed out the significance of the lexical and grammatical details of the Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek texts, and they never tell you which ones, okay? At the same time, they have striven for more than a word-for-word -word translation. Because thought patterns and syntax differ from language to language, faithful communication of the meaning of the writers of the Bible demands frequent modica modifications, okay, right there demands frequent modifications in the sentence structure and constant regard for the contextual meaning of words. Okay? A sensitive so there's going to be frequent modifications, okay, on their own admission in the preface in the NIV. A sensitive feeling for style does not always accompany scholarship. Accordingly, the Committee on the Bible Translation submitted the developing version to a number of stylistic consultants. Two of them read every book of, the, of both Old and New Testaments twice. Two scholars, okay? Two scholars. Once before and once after the last major revision and made invaluable suggestions. Samples of the translation were tested for clarity and ease of reading by various kinds of people, young and old, highly educated and less well-educated ministers and laymen. So, man, they had two scholars that read completely through this translation. Isn't that nice? I think that is great. And then they make, right, Frequent modifications, okay? And that frequent modification is every year they change the text, okay? Because every year they do that same thing. They have people reevaluate it, go through it, and change it. Now, if you have a copy of the book Double Jeopardy, 
the New American Standard Bible Update by Lawrence M. Vance. It's a great book. It tells you and shows you all the changes, modifications in your NIS, in your New American Standard. And it's amazing. In the beginning, it says, The New American Standard Bible, released in 1963 as a New Testament and issued as a complete Bible in 71, was once the darling of conservative scholars and those who rejected the authorized version, but could not embrace the Revised Standard Version and other modern versions. But with the advent of the complete New International Version in 78, the NASB gradually lost market share until it was eclipsed by the NIV. The publication of the complete New King James Version in 82 further eroded the market share of the NASB. To combat the demise of the NASB, the Lachman Foundation, the copyright holder of the NASB, initiated a revision of the NASB, which they called an update. Finished in 1995, this update first appeared in the Ryrie Study Bible Expanded Edition published by Moody Press. The release of the New American Standard Bible update was accompanied by a massive advertising campaign with large color ads in magazines like Christianity Today. And like I had mentioned before, Christianity Today, do not most people on their blog, they do not believe God has a perfectly preserved word. They think it's a history book. So naturally, the reason given for the publication of yet another version of the Bible was not because of the loss of market share by the original NASB. According to the promotional brochure for the NASB update, clarity and readability, greater understanding, and smoother reading, making it the better, the best translation of the scriptures even better. And better English are the reasons given to justify the updating of the NASB. Wow. So, but some nagging questions about the NASB update remain. Is the NASBU, NASB update really just a minor update? What exactly has been updated? Has the Lachman Foundation been honest in describing the nature of this update? Which edition of the NASB is to be considered the Word of God? Which Greek text was followed? Now that it has been updated, is the NASB suitable to replace the King James Version? And in spite of all the changes made in the NASB update, really any different from the NASB? Wow. Updates and updates and updates. Okay? That's what you find in your NIV, and that's why... And that's what you find in your NASB. Okay. There has been revisions to the text. Now, the King James Authorized Version, the text has not been revised. The text has been the same for far for 400 years. The only thing that has been changed in your King James Authorized Version is five things. And it has nothing to do with the text. Okay, and, and that's what you have to understand, because most that attack the King James Authorized Version, you know, most attack, you know, that, you know, it has the big words, so they had to change those, you know, and, you know, it has ye and thee and thou, and, and we can't understand that. It has the word dispensation, you know, that's too hard to understand. We need to change that. Well, the revisions in the King James Authorized Version are not textual revisions. Okay, In 1613, they removed the Apocrypha and repaired typographical errors. Okay, so typing errors. They didn't change the, the words. They, there were spelling type, you know, typographical errors. In 1644, they added a preface by Dr. John Cain, which subsequently was removed. Okay, In 1676, it contained a parallel text by Dr. Scattergood, which subsequently was removed. And the 1680 edition added Bishop Usher's chronology, still available as a study help in some Bibles. And you'll find Usher's dating system in your old Scoldfield Bible, the 1917. And, and, you know, Bishop Usher has a book on the dating system, and I would encourage you to read that. 1769 is the last um, revision. Modernized spelling, orthography, in other words, murder for murther. Murther was the word they originally used when they put together the King James Authorized Version. Murther means murder, okay? The text didn't change, okay? They just 
put the words, they modernize the words. The words still, still mean the same. Okay? Clearly, when we went through all those um, different verses, the words do not mean the same in the corrupt text. And they remove words and they don't replace them. And that's gross error. Okay, so they modernize the spelling and orthography and calligraphy. Okay, the V in the calligraphy is now a U. Okay, and that those are the changes they made. Notice they did not change anything in the text. The text has been the same 400 plus years, perfectly preserved without error. Thanks again for listening. Email me at reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com. And again, not all editions of the NIV and ASB are the same. Thanks again for listening. Subscribe to my channel.